Hey guys, in this tech tips video, we're going to be talking about methods for driving linear motion. We have a variety of different methods you can use, and the first one we'll be talking about are the tube rollers. We have a variety of tube rollers available. The ones we're talking about today are the aluminum versions with the set screw in the center, uh, because you could use that as a drive mechanism. The tube rollers are just smaller in length than the channel, so you can run them inside of the channel or on the outside of the channel and their parabolic shape will allow you to run them on a variety of different sizes of tubing or pipe. Um, so one of the first projects I did when I started on board here at servocity.com um, was to build this, this rail racer. Um, so we'll link to that video in the show notes. But essentially in this rail racer we were using those aluminum uh, with set screw tube rollers and we drove this along a PVC track and so we, we've kept this guy around for the memories um, all you can see we've taken out the motor and the batteries but it is definitely possible and they can certainly take a lot of weight. One thing to note on the tube rollers um, if you guys are going to be doing a mechanism that requires positioning feedback so you want to run something down a track and know exactly where it is if you accelerate or decelerate too quickly with the tube rollers, they have a tendency to slip on very slick pipe. So there's a possibility that it would not be in the correct position. So keep that in mind. All right. Next up, we have linear actuators and linear servos. We actually had a in-depth video on linear actuators and linear servos and the differences in between those. So make sure you watch that video if you're interested. Um, basically, these have a lead screw down inside. Uh, this this driving the extension tube in and out. The linear actuator is going to be a brushed DC motor that just connects to power or you can connect it to a motor controller to run it in and out. Uh, they're going to have limit switches on the inboard and the outboard so you can't run it too far and damage it. And then the linear servo, um, that's going to require a PWM signal to operate. So you could just connect that to an RC transmitter and receiver or Arduino board or about whatever servo controller you want to use and drive that to a very specific location because it's tied into the internal potentiometer. All right, next up we have using a timing belt. The timing belts and timing pulleys that we offer for Actobotics are XL series, so it's a 0.2 inch pitch. Um, <clears throat> we offer a variety of different sizes of belting as well as the pulleys. Um, they make a, a great, very low noise mechanism for, for driving a, a linear system like this. Um, they're often used in camera systems, but they could also be used for extensions on your robot, um, you know, moving something relatively quickly because um, the, the pulley size is going to determine how quickly your, um, your dolly moves up and down the channel or up and down the track. Now a larger pulley is going to cause it to move quicker, however have less linear thrust. Alright, well next up we're going to talk about using gear racks to create linear motion. A gear rack is basically a series of gears um, in a linear fashion that's able to mesh to a standard spur gear. Um, so you can make that to a large hub gear or you can make it to a pinion gear depending on how fast you want to move the gear rack. Um, in this assembly we have a 32 pitch pinion gear um, mated to the 32 pitch gear rack. Uh, the pinion gear has to be a happens to be a 16 tooth gear so every rotation of the shaft is going to cause 16 teeth to go by on the gear rack. Um, if you wanted that gear rack to move faster and have a little less linear thrust, you could run a larger pinion gear and less rotations would cause it to move the same distance. The second assembly we're going to show is our 785 gear rack kit. We actually created the kit because it is very unique. The high-tech HS785HB servo is a multi-turn servo, so there are very few on the market like it. Um, since this servo is a multi-turn servo, it's able to run the gear rack all the way from one end to the other with the proper PWM signal while retaining feedback. Um, this is going to happen to have a lot of thrust and there's no chance of slippage because the gear rack is pressed up against the pinion gear that's driving it. Um, we actually have four different versions of the 785 gear rack kit, some with a single gear rack and some with two gear racks, um, one on top of the pinion gear and one below the pinion gear. And finally, we're going to talk about one of my favorite methods for driving linear motion, and that is our lead screws. 
The lead screws that we offer are an 8 mil diameter. They're a four start lead screw, two mil pitch. Uh, so that means every rotation of the lead screw is going to cause the nut or barrel nut to move eight millimeters. Uh, we offer two different nuts currently. One is going to be a, a barrel nut. It's a half inch OD, so you can clamp a half inch clamping hub or bottom tap clamping mount or, or any style of clamping mount around it. Uh, the nice thing is you can clock it that way. You know, if you have multiple lead screw nuts on, on one lead screw, you can rotate them exactly where you want them before you clamp it down. The other version uh, is going to be a little more complex. It is the, um, the barrel nut and that's going to have the Actobotics pattern already machined into it. Um, so you could just bolt a piece of channel or you know whatever Actobotics component you want to it. Um, but it also has a one inch diameter so if you want to clamp around that one and index, index it in the same way you can definitely do that. Now lead screws are really nice because it takes so many rotations to move a given distance. Um, so you, you have to rotate it further than say if you're using the timing belt to move a certain distance. Um, however, you get a lot more linear thrust when doing that. You're, it's a trade-off between speed and linear thrust. So lead screws provide a great way to make your own linear actuators, which is uh, one of my favorite things about them. Um, so because it's actobotic space, you can have a multitude of ways to go about building your linear actuator. You can do it in a variety of lengths. Um, you can use a variety of uh, support styles. So in this particular example, we're using X-Rail and V-Wheels. And in this next example, we're using linear bearings and some shafting. So one of the advantages is that it's going to have a lot of holding power um, and it's also going to have a lot of thrust. So um, it might not be as strong as going with one of our uh, pre-built linear actuators, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. One thing to note on the linear actuators, you always need to tie the lead screw to the motor in, in some fashion or another, whether that's running it off of gears or running it direct drive like we've done today. Now we have clamping shaft couplers to make that coupling. So uh, in this case we have an 8 mil to 6 mil clamping shaft coupler. And then on the far side to hold that lead screw we have an 8 millimeter bearing. Um, now not all lead screws that you find out on the market are going to be precisely the correct diameter to run through a bearing. So you may go out and you, you may purchase an 8 mil lead screw and find that it's a little oversized and it won't th fit through a bearing. So be very careful when you're selecting your parts. Also, a lead screw is going to work a lot better for you than a threaded rod. And in fact, we've created an entire video uh, specifically on comparing and contrasting those two. So go ahead and check out the description below for the link to that video as well. In this video, we've talked about the mechanisms used for driving linear motion. And in our next video, we're going to break down and talk about the rest of the mechanisms for your linear motion systems that would be used to guide and support that linear motion.